What's going on everyone? So doing a little collaboration with the homie Jen Pachi in somewhat of a podcast format. And if it does well, we'll probably keep doing it in a, in a more regular basis. So if you end up liking this, feel free to let me know in the comments. Any feedback and all that will be appreciated. So we're gonna jump to a few topics. But first, I'll let Jim Pachi introduce himself, if you don't know who he is. So, I'm uh, Jim Pachi. I play and stream Arkham Origins, Arkham Knight, do a lot of uh, creative gameplay kind of deals, stealth games. You know, it's mostly like a gaming and also animation channel, and it's still growing. So, you know, feel free to check me out. And I'm pretty sure you'll be entertained. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me, Revenant, and we'll... I'm excited to discuss these topics and and go into the nitty gritty. So here we go. <laughs> Alrighty. So uh, if you didn't see the title of the video, the thumbnail and whatnot, so we're gonna be getting into Assassin's Creed Mirage, Gotham Knights, Saints Row reboot, and Last of Us One remake or Last of Us Part One, however you want to call it. So. Let's start off with Assassin's Creed Mirage that Ubisoft showed off at that shitty little event they had. Which, you know, they, they always have it. So, I guess they were trying to compete with the Marvel and Disney showcase. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty ass. And they showed off a CGI trailer, which was pretty long. I think it was like three minutes long of yeah. Assassin's Creed <laughs> Mirage. And... Uh, no gameplay, but if you want, you can pre-order it now, and they have a collector's edition with all the little like uh, collectibles and whatnot. You know, pre-order the game you know nothing about, and, and invest in the collector's edition. Yep. So, um, pretty much, it's takes place apparently before Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and it was leaks that it, that this was originally going to be DLC for Valhalla, so that now it makes more sense. But um, this is not an RPG. It's allegedly going back to its roots, and uh, you know we heard heard that before. So who knows? My assumption is that it's just gonna be some. It's gonna feel like DLC. Apparently, the uh, the game goes for fifty dollars, so it's not even sixty dollars. So who knows? I think it's gonna be ass, honestly. Yeah, who knows what the quality is gonna be? I'm being honest. I just I don't care. I don't. I mean like. I, I was a huge fan of Assassin's Creed and I just I can't care anymore. Like they once they killed off Desmond and they started like I kind of like I'm I was annoyed by that, but I wasn't like so upset. I, I was like, alright, maybe they could go in a different direction. But they just never built any momentum after that. It was like the Desmond story was like the only cohesive story. And now we have like Leila Hassan, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, um, Valhalla, Origins, you know. And it's one of those deals where, like, it's so hard for me to invest into the story because I know that the assassin world kind of doesn't matter because all the events already happened. And I also know that the plot threads in the real world don't go anywhere. You know, and I, I always assumed because, you know, in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and in, uh, I want to say Revelations, I don't remember. It's been a while, but I know they had scenes where Desmond was, star was starting to absorb the skills of Altair and Ezio into his like body and he was able to like fight to fight in the real world like some limited scenes so i thought maybe they were gonna slowly build us up to modern day assassin's creed over the course of several games and i was like i was willing to like play a long series like five or six games in until we finally got that payoff but we never did they sacrificed desmond and then they even took away his specialness and that you don't even need Desmond anymore. You could just, anybody can just use the Animus. So I just don't care anymore. I, I, no matter what games come out, if, if they look good or if they look bad, I just, it's so hard for me to care. Like Assassin's Creed, um, what was it, Revenant? Assassin's Creed Syndicate and Unity were, they, even then, when the games were closer to, to the older Assassin's Creed, I already stopped caring. It was like, more so you. Yeah, like I, I already just stopped caring. Like I just I had no investment, and and I feel like Ubisoft. I mean, I, I know a lot of people buy those games and they sell well, but I feel like Ubisoft really dropped the ball 
and i don't think they can ever bring it back to a point to make like me care again so i'm pretty sure there's other former assassin's creed fans that feel that way i also don't care for the rpg elements but that's a whole like another that's a whole other um set of complaints because you know they, that should have been a new ip like it, it's not it's so far, far removed from what Assassin's Creed should be that I feel like, why does he even have the title? You know, they would have been better not having to tie it to that series and they could really go all out with whatever like crazy stuff they wanted to do instead of um, having to like keep things grounded because it's in the Assassin's Creed universe where clearly with the objects of Eden becoming magical items, like straight on like magical combat items, it's like, yeah. why even bother? Like, why even call it Assassin's Creed? I know... On the other hand, people say, well, they want the game to sell. They'll tie it to the name recognition. But mm -hmm. overall, I went a little rant, guys. But it's because I, I was really into it. And I'm, like, super uh, just, like, deflated and done with the series. Like, I don't think they can do anything to make me hype again about it. So, yeah. Sorry about that rant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's all right. That's what we're here for. Uh, but, yeah, uh, you know. Jim Ponte's more of a fan of that series than I am, and he got into it like before me. Uh, didn't you tell me you um, got all the achievements in the first one or something, or the, the second one? In the first three, I believe, actually. So that's one, two, and Brotherhood, right? Yeah, like that? and then and then in um, one, two, and Brotherhood, and then during Revelations, I, I didn't care. Right, right. Like I said, I mean, I, I liked Revelations, but I didn't really care about um, the. Uh, the trophies or achievements or whatever. Yeah, I, just, yeah. I just didn't care anymore. Right. I just think at some point they just didn't know what the hell they were doing. They keep assigning different teams to all these different games and then it's like yearly and then it's like they clearly have no idea what they want to take the series and it's like going in so many different directions and then instead of staying true to its actual roots they then they want to copy you know like Dark Souls and The Witcher 3 and trying to make it an open world RPG, then they're trying to, you know, have you fight all these giant mythical creatures, and then it's just a whole bunch of shit. And then they had that uh, Zelda clone, the, the, the Immortals game, whatever. Uh, who knows how that well that did? And they could have continued the RPG uh, games from there with that game, but it seemed like they're still going to keep doing it. You know what I conflate that to? I conflate it to like a channel where like in, in Ubisoft is kind of like a YouTube channel that specializes in like cooking or something. And then they see that, hey, this trailer got a lot of views. Let's become a trailer a trailer channel as well mm -hmm. or whatever. And then like, oh, wait, uh, this other unboxing thing is going well. Let's do unboxing videos now. And then like you forget that, hey, people were tuning in for the cooking. They weren't tuning in for, for all that other stuff. They went to other places that yeah. do those things better. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Ubisoft is um, really, I, I honestly feel even at the at making an RPG, I think that it was actually not really a good RPG even, um, you know, because most nowadays RPG, as far as like what we're used to with like a game like Dark Souls or Elden Ring or even um, like Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls, where you're, or especially like Oblivion, where like your stats are like a key part of your character. I feel like most modern rpgs play like limited action games it's almost like they're, they're they're rpgs because it's easier to make them have rpg mechanics than to have a fluid combat system mm -hmm. i said fluid i meant fluent a fluent combat system where everything goes according to um how uh, basically the combat will flow and everything will move naturally right like when you play a game like arkham for example or spider-man and everything flows that's that's harder to do i think and people are more forgiving to like stiff combat in RPGs. Then they could add micro trans um, transactions, things like that. So I kind of look at it that way, where like I don't even think a lot of the developers want their games to be RPGs. They just want them to. They just want to like be have like a, a little barrier of like, oh well, it's an RPG, so the combat's a little stiff or whatever. Blah blah blah. I, I mean, I don't know how true it might not be true, but I feel like that could be a part of it, you know. Yeah, I think also it's just to keep people playing as much as possible because you see people doing a bunch of Let's Plays, uh, streaming and Twitch and all that. So it can just keep the game going as long as it can without having to have like just like uh, dedicated online to it 
to keep it going that will probably end up dying out. They can just keep the, the uh, RPG mechanics in there to keep people playing. Because apparently uh, Valhalla is just some bloated mess where people are just saying that it goes on and on and on. So... A lot of and they and pumping out DLC. I think the last expansion or whatever it's apparently going to be is coming out later this year. And the whole Assassin's Creed like little like celebration event just seemed like a whole bunch of just marketing. Yeah, marketing, looks like marketing malarkey. Yeah, like they're doing the, uh, a Netflix show or a game or both or something well, like you know, that. And here's the thing, like. I think at this point, anyone who's a gamer knows if there's an adaptation, I know we, you know, people try not to be negative and give them a chance, but they are usually terrible. They are usually so far removed from what, what they're supposed to be, Resident whether, Evil. whether it be anime, whether it be um, games that are made into shows. It, mm. just, it just doesn't matter. Comic books. If, they, if there's a property that exists, they are going to quote unquote, if you hear the word subvert, then no, it's not going to be the thing that you like. It's just not. And like, I think at this point, like you want to give them people the benefit of the doubt. But realistically, like we have to look at like the track record. And it's like, what adaptation has been good? Maybe Sonic? Maybe. Maybe. Sonic. Maybe. Um, Maybe the first Mortal Kombat movie. I'm not talking about the last one. The last one was like, they, they did a lot of disrespect in that movie. Yeah, they, they did good with um, the way certain characters looked. But a lot of characters were like straight on, straight up disrespected in that movie. Yeah, so I don't think whatever adaptation they try to do, it's not going to go so well. Like being that Assassin's Creed adaptation, they're going to change a lot because, like, that's the that's what I'm trying to say. Like, whatever timeline they put it in, they're going to change a lot about the universe because the writers want to write their story. They don't want to keep it to um, the games. They don't want to feel limited, so they'll say like, "Oh, um, like the Batman." Like Matt Reeves with the Batman where he's like, well, this is my adaptation. So we're going to change a bunch of stuff. Batman doesn't give to charity anymore. Now he's just some emo dude trained by Alfred, you know, whatever. I mean, the movie had some OK scenes. It's not absolutely horrible, but point is, they'll, so they'll change a lot. And I uh, have no hype. I, Assassin's Creed, like, I mean, come on, like that show, Netflix. Yeah, we already know what it's going to be like. Uh, they also had announced two upcoming games, and this is when you know they really have nothing. Uh, they're we're be, we're being referred as code names. So there's Code Name Red, which apparently is a uh, set in uh, China, I think they said. And I believe that's going to be an RPG game. And I'm hearing, I don't know if it's true or not, because I'm going to be real with you. I don't really give a fuck about going out of my way, trying to get every little information right because no one really cares much about it right now i mean to the point where they're being referred to as assassin's creed codename this codename that so apparently that uh the codename red is gonna be uh, a phone game yeah so mm -hmm. and then they have uh what is it codename hexy or some shit like that allegedly you gotta create your character in that one and apparently that's a phone game this is hitman go. watch it be like a, a thing like hitman go yeah so <laughs> it's gonna be some cheap crap I, I kind of like Hitman Go. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie, but it's not a Hitman game. It's just a cash in. Yeah. So, you know, but back to um, Mir Mirage. Uh, <laughs> you play as this guy, um, Bayam, Basim, whatever the fuck his name is. I don't know. Bayak. Bayak. I don't know what his name is. I just made that up. Bayak. I think that's the guy from Origins, right? Is it Bayak? I think he's Bayak? Bayak, Bayak, whatever. Um, you know. Anyway, so, um, He's uh, from uh, Valhalla, so again, like I said, it takes place before then, like many years before. And your mentor is, surprise, surprise, a woman by the name of Russian, uh, not spelled actually like Russian, but Russian, played by some alleged famous actor, I don't know who the fuck she is, I don't remember her name, some weird name, uh, saw she smoked a bunch of cigarettes or something, she's like, I am very happy to be playing this role. For the assassin creed game and she'll probably you know in the game be mentoring your character and she'll say some shit you are not ready yet you are still a boy and you know typical you know possibly typical feminist bullshit where 
she's gonna be talking down on him. He's gonna look stupid. Oh, he's gonna be a hothead. She's gonna have to control him. Remember he's gonna fuck up and assess. Oh yeah. Remember that scene I showed you? Yeah, yeah. And you had freaking uh Burke, and he's like, "How could you sister be so smart? <laughs> and you, Chris, are so dumb. That's so it's such terrible writing and so on the nose. And it's like it's a terrible adaptation, even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't um freaking." like woke it would still be bad it's like double bad it's like stacking shit on top of shit like yeah it's just and i, I know we're not gonna go too, into too much detail but it's like hilarious how much they like interject so much of that into <laughs> into like games and movies now like they really they're really trying to convince people as hard as they can of these things of these concepts and they're willing to like sacrifice entire series for it mm-hmm so this is probably to be it won't be this, uh, any any different than what we've seen in the past. Uh, the director or whoever the fuck it is for the, for uh, Mirage is a lady. That doesn't necessarily mean that she's gonna that they're gonna fuck things up. But it's current Ubisoft, and do we really have a lot of faith in them? I mean, they showed you a CGI trailer, no gameplay. Apparently, this game is supposed to come out early next year, uh, but they expect you to pre-order. The collector's edition right away i would never do like, like and again like for for each to each their own like everyone should do what they want to do I, I always i always try to um stick to that mentality as long as you're not harming another person you know do what you want to do yeah but me personally i can never ever pre-order a collector's edition of a game i know nothing about <laughs> or even pre-order it like i think the only the, one of the few games i would pre-order would be something that i've been following or something that I've seen gameplay of already, or that I know generally I'm gonna like, and I kind of got sh- gotten uh, shafted by that a bit, because um, I pre-ordered. Remember, I pre-ordered Arkham Origins years ago, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I love my like if you watch my channel, I love doing creative gameplay. I love stealth games and, and just those kind of um, sandbox games like Hitman, Sniper Elite, things like that, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But one major thing that i i was disappointed with was how glitchy that game was and i pre-ordered it somewhat blindly because i assumed since it was an arkham game that it was going to have like polish and i had to return my copy three times because i thought i had defective copies turns out the game was just super glitchy three times right wasn't it three times arkham origins I just know I had to bring it back. I had like several I copies. You told me about it, but I don't remember exactly. That's crazy. Three times. Yeah, Arkham Origins. I had to keep replacing it because um, I I thought my copies were bugged. I thought like I had like a because it was so buggy. I when I my playthroughs of it, like when I first played it, that I thought that the game itself was the game disc was damaged or something. Like it was like a defective copy. And then I realized that no, the game's just a buggy mess. And obviously that was years ago, so I was more naive. Where nowadays, if I buy the game, I'm just gonna assume that it's buggy. Yeah. But I still like the game, by the way. It's just that, that that was an example of a blind pre-order going going south a bit. Um, yeah. yeah, so you, I don't, I don't, I would never do it. I would never do it. And also back to Assassin's Creed. Um, Mirage. Mirage, it's just like p they really need to like i think they should show more gameplay before advertising that stuff at least show like more like you know something of substance and then you know throw the collector's edition or whatever like you know yeah like at least show something they you know you're hyping up this 15 year anniversary uh most of the people who even watched that stream was there for assassin's creed they have no just dance uh, uh rabbits rain man um whatever the, uh mario rabbits whatever it's called or any sort of bullshit uh, uh rainbow six mobile whatever the fuck they're there for assassin's creed so you're celebrating 15 years and you literally have nothing to show for it so what's the point you show a cgi trailer you can't even show gameplay for this game that's supposed to be coming out next year there's nothing you can show. This game no, isn't any. Eight. It only showed one teaser, and now we like. I mean, granted, I know that the last the, the last thing that we saw was CGI because I mean, it was like um the the cutscenes were make, integrated into the gameplay, but ju- looking at the animations and the flow of, of the combat, you can tell that like that's real gameplay mixed in with like the cutscenes, kind of like Tekken Seven where the story mode was like that. So at least we have something to like look at and say, okay, we can kind of judge this. These are in-game models. Yeah, this is something. We like I play. I also play a lot of Tekken, so you can tell, like you can see visually that that was like gameplay. 
you know, yeah. just just without the he- with, without the displays of health bars and stuff, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Just you know, for the sake of the trailer. Yeah. And Tekken Seven was similar in that regard, with like integrated cutscenes and combat. So, but at least at least I seen that. So if I pre-order it, I'm like, all right, well, I kind of know what the game will look like. I kind of see the direction of like the at least the art style and design. And it's not all CGI. It's like gameplay mixed in. Yeah. So at least like with say like Tekken Eight or other games that they, that they show Stella off Blade, and yeah Stellar Blade or even with uh, Spider-Man uh, 2 and whatnot at least they showed something we at least know have an idea what it's going to be like where with Assassin's Creed it's like you know you're telling us a lot but you're not showing us much and we see with these CGI trailers with Assassin's Creed and whatnot the game looks nothing like it it's not, not even as fluid and it's just a whole bunch of shit where it's like it, it, it doesn't the the CGI trailers isn't a really good representation of what the product is actually going to be like. So, I think we kind of went on a uh, little bit long on Assassin's Creed uh, Mirage. I think Dishonored <laughs> told us a lot about what a CGI Yeah, player. and the actual <laughs> game looks <laughs> like. Because that game looks like soup. Awful. Like clay. By, by the way, um, yeah, like... There's nothing. Also, there's nothing wrong with a CGI trailer to get people hyped. But if you're gonna start selling, don't start. Like the point is, just don't start giving us pre-order content. Like at least let us see something. You know, have the, the dignity to show your game because it makes me feel like, as a consumer, as a person buying that product, or or thinking about buying the product, it makes me feel like these people don't. Like they don't care. Like they're just gonna assume that hey, I can just put anything out and these people are gonna eat it up. Like why even bother trying to to actually respect it. like stand behind your game show your game if it's good then the gameplay will speak for itself i guess and you're, you're not respecting the consumers and you're expecting them to be basically uh you know pay pigs or whatever you want to call it. yeah i mean like, what do you want to call it? so it's a term like sheeple like i don't know like just oh i see like corporate slaves or yeah, something like henchmen like, corporate henchmen like oh i see i see i see cgi must buy now pre-order this collector's box and then you get the game and it doesn't work yeah it doesn't yeah I mean, you know, you, nowadays you don't know what the fuck you're gonna get. Does it work? Does it not work? Can you get a refund? I mean, anyway, I mean, speaking of another game that probably won't work, considering who it's developed by, uh, Gotham Knights. Oh, man. <laughs> so Gotham Knights apparently is supposed to be coming out this year. I believe it was delayed, right? At one point. Yeah, it was wasn't delayed. it delayed? It was. I think it was delayed, and then. Uh, they canceled last gen. Yeah, yeah. Even though this looks like a last gen only it game, looks, I think it looks. Eight. So don't quote me on this because I'm not 100 percent certain. But I could have sworn the first time they showed the gameplay of like Batgirl, it looked better. Like it looked more like like um Arkham Knight's direction of like art style. Yeah, well now it looks like, like cartoon. Yeah, and, I, I and then I could be wrong. I could be remembering wrong to be fair. Yeah. But from my my. When I recollect the original trailer, I remember like the lighting being darker, heavier shadows, like better like um, better weather effects and everything. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. I think it was like snow and all that was going on. <laughs> and, like she was like running, uh, did some like. When they said level five, Mister Freeze, man, that took me out of it. That just took like. Speaking of RPGs. Yeah, like I just, you know, like so a lot of a lot of a <laughs> Warner lot of, Brothers, Montreal, like Ubisoft. I see what you're doing, and I like it. Well, Warner Brothers likes to do a lot of shady stuff, you know? And Warner Brothers, after all. Better Warner Brother. But anyway. Especially if you got that music. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, you can't even stream. You know, the funny thing is, is that I've had challenges uploading streams because the in-game music is copyrighted. So, Warner Brothers would claim your video for using in-game music. In-game soundtrack. You know? Like, imagine you're streaming Final Fantasy and then your stream gets taken down for the in-game music it's like so i'm supposed to stream the game without music or the person the company thinks they're entitled to revenue because for my gameplay because i'm playing the game as intended as released they want that five cents from the stream no, you're gonna from the st- revenue you're gonna steal five cents from from cookie uh from cookie crumb youtubers you know and i think it's wrong you know I, i'm not gonna you know go on a high horse I, I, obviously you know copyright laws exist for a reason but like how are you gonna you're just they're just stealing from small youtubers it just i feel like it's an active decision by Warner brothers because they know 
that it's like cheap revenue because yeah it might be five cents but if like hundreds of thousands of people are uploading this gameplay and all those videos are getting copyrighted that's just money in their pocket you know i think it's intentional it has to, i don't think it's like just a blanket system i think Warner brothers knows what they're doing with this and they're intentionally doing it to nickel and dime even streamers and gamers yeah like all these other greedy mega corporations do but um yeah so gotham knights uh, it's supposed to be coming out and if you haven't seen any gameplay of it that apparently they've been showing uh you got people about like less than 10 enemies on screen but some of them in the background the t posing uh what was the the uh, batgirl footage that they showed where she's doing like a i think like a stealth like a takedown from behind or something and it's like she's hitting the enemies and like not, react not reacting to it I don't know what the fuck's going on. Get her over. Yeah, and it's just and then they're showing uh they're talking about how the characters are with each other. Like uh uh oh, he's man. round, he's sharp, he's he's uh he's blocky, he's this, he's like he's like describing shapes with all this shit and you probably hear background noise, but you know. Anyway what about Harley uh, in the Harley Quinn at, remember that Harley Quinn thing with uh oh that say, oh, she's ugly a manic, a manic pixie enough of her being a manic pixie now she's the boss and she's a villain she's replacing the Joker and like look I'm gonna be honest with you I'm gonna be honest with you guys like people have asked me if I'm gonna play Gotham Knights or stream it when it comes out and as of right now I have zero hype for that game absolutely zero like I just don't want to do it because the gameplay looks bad to me it, and you know i've had um people say well oh it's because you're comparing it to the arkham series it doesn't have to play like arkham and i i never said it has to play like arkham it can play in an entirely new direction but that's just a, a defense mechanism yeah people to defend it yeah to try to like defend their potential purchase because they're hyped for it and yeah. they see some people are not they can't handle it so it's like why aren't you excited like i am why aren't you gonna pre-order like i am and like i said like i mentioned in the beginning of the of our you know of the podcast format video whatever you want to call it is that i'm a huge like batman fan i'm a crazy huge batman fan and like the fact that i have no hype for this game is like it, it honestly makes me kind of sad because it's it's you know a sign that game even something i like can be uh yeah tainted you know like these people like like this game it just looks very 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 generic it looks very grindy it looks like the kind of game where your attacks don't have any real impact a lot of similar animations um i don't like the art style they look like clunky they remind me kind of of like gears of war character character models like they have like this like like, don't get me wrong, like, there's nothing wrong with, like, overly masculine characters, but then when I look at Nightwing, Nightwing is, like, a slender, like, sleek kind of character, and, like, I, I guess I can buy Red Hood being bulky, because he's more of, like, a tough guy, but even him, he's, like, a faster, agile character, like, it just looks, like, like, really cheap, like, a, it looks like a cash-in, honestly, it really looks like a cash-in, and it looks grindy, it looks like it's gonna have microtransactions up to, you know, up to culo, and I just don't, have any hype for it i just think it's not gonna i just don't i i might play it but i will not get it day one that's the kind of game that like if i do play it it would have to be like for free or somebody gifted me the game because they wanted me to like stream it or something or like um it's like dirt cheap because it did terribly it's like what like five like ten dollar game bargain bin game or something mm -hmm. well just wait maybe a month after it comes out it'll be on playstation plus and game pass so you know, and don't have even, to go crazy spending money on it. And even then, if I got it for free, I probably still wouldn't want to play it, honestly. Like, it just doesn't look good. I think it's going to be very... I think it's going to be like the Avengers, but for DC. And, and probably Suicide Squad will also somehow be that as well. Oh, yeah. Can't forget. All right. Anyway, uh, let's get to the third topic. So we're halfway done. And again, guys, if you like what you're hearing... Let us know in the comments. We'll keep this going more uh, on a regular basis. But if like no one doesn't care, then you know this will be a one and done maybe. I don't know. But anyway, Saints Row Reboot. Speaking of another game that has every business being on PlayStation Plus or uh, Game Pass, 
and I know I kind of talk about this game to death by now, and a lot of people, but uh, it's sometimes it's fun to always kick someone when they're down. <laughs> anyway, um, especially when they're an asshole. Yeah, especially when they're assholes. And speaking of assholes, um, Volition allegedly, I've heard about heard this uh, more than on one occasion. Apparently, they. Uh, I don't know if it's them or whoever the fuck is like the, a moderator or Reddit or Discord or whatever. Whoever is involved with someone at Volition, someone associated with the company, has apparently been doxing people. So I'm not entirely sure how true that is, but I wouldn't put it past them because these people clearly can't take criticism whatsoever. They can't handle it. You've seen how they acted. You've seen how the uh, fans had acted. And funny thing, a lot of them have disappeared. Shock. Uh, yeah, they they went to the sh- yeah they definitely went to the shadow <laughs> realm, shadow as they should. And yeah, so since I talked everyone's ear off about this, I'm gonna let uh, Jim Pachi give his thoughts on the whole thing. Since it's a uh, reveal trailer up until the build up to its release and the aftermath of the whole uh, shit show uh, and I'll uh, give my give a few of my thoughts when he's done you know same way he has to say well I'll put it this way I mean you've covered a lot of the subject in over past videos I mean I kind of generally agree with you I will say there are little things that really they really t- they really piss me off about the whole situation and like even, let, let's not look at the political side of things of like all the kind of all the um shit they're pushing like as far as like politics go anyway so as i was saying as far as the politics go with the game like even if you don't look at it from that end they went really hard trying to push this game to a certain crowd of people they really wanted to say people who don't like it are bigoted or that they're potentially, you know, all kinds of all kinds of crazy things. But the game didn't work. They knew it didn't work. They knew it didn't work. They were trying to get a built-in fan base of people that think a certain way to sell a broken <laughs> game to. Like even if you don't even if you take away the politics, like take away like the specifics of like it. The agenda, they, like the subtle agenda that was going on. That's yeah. Obvious. Like you see, like if you look at the uh, credits and you see the, the the developers, the pictures of them. Wh- but what, but what do you think they? What do you, what do you? How do you think they feel? What do you think the? You think uh, it just so happened that it was a coincidence that you got the pride flag in the character's uh, apartment? And and that's what I'm saying. All that stuff is annoying. Just using that as an example. And it, and it's annoying. It's really it's really annoying to see that in, in um to see that in be forced down people's throats. Like not necessarily like you know the gay stuff, or whatever. It's just more so like the politics aspect of it, right? But even then, take take away all of that. You think they didn't know the game was a buggy mess and didn't work? There's no way in hell, there's absolutely no way in hell that on release they didn't know the game was in a buggy, broken state. Six months away. So, that means that they planned to, to pull one over on people that are supposed to be like-minded thinkers. They try to get them to buy a game that was broken. People that are, they're like, oh, well, our fan base thinks like us. That's why we're going to put our politics in the game. You're trying to sell a broken game literally to your own people. Yep. Like, even from that aspect alone, they should be held accountable. Like, that's horrible. That's a horrible thing to do. Like, even if you take away the politics, like, just the fact of, like, hey, we're going to release this game, and you know it's that broken, then you're fighting with people on Twitter, you're trying to clown people on Twitter, knowing the to- the, to- the clock is ticking, and eventually the game will be released and people will see the truth. So you try to get as many people in. That are the same political alignment as you, as far as like how you think, mm-hmm. and then you try to pull one over on them. So how much can they really care about those people if they want to s- willing to sell them a broken game that doesn't work? Yeah, exactly. Like this to add on, it's obvious they view those people that they were trying to get as as buyers of this new Saints Row. Like they're trying to build this new fan base for the Saints Row game because we know it's not for 
the OG fans. That's, it's obvious, especially when you look at the characters. So they view this new crowd of people as idiots because they see, oh, well, uh, representation, diversity, all this other shit. Uh, you don't have to choose your race or gender, uh, you know, for those people because, like, it's the same, they're catering to people where it's like, Oh, I, I don't have a gender. There's uh, more than two genders. Uh, I feel like I'm a binary dinosaur dragon f a fluffy dog or some shit today. By the way, none of that crap that they're saying is actually like relevant to the series at all because you always had that option since Saints Row 2. Yeah. You could have a male character, right? So maybe um, maybe we'll like show footage of it within the game, maybe? It shouldn't be too hard. Uh, let's we'll try, yeah. I don't know. You know, maybe or maybe not. Don't hold me Don't hold me to that. But if you make the max... There's like a masculinity and femininity... Uh, meet uh, slider, yeah. Yeah, slider. So if you make a female character, you could put the masculinity all the way up. And they yeah. become a man. Yeah, they're they're yeah. literally 100% a, a, a the same as the male model yeah. now. But they're... they're technical gender is, is female. Yep. And vice versa, right? So it could be a male character and then... Saints Row 2 was that 2008? 2008. Back in 2008. Po those politics didn't even like, weren't even like so being shoved down people's throats like that. When when the world was at least seen normal. So none of that stuff is new. Like the at all, all they're trying to push it like this, like this new uh, brand new thing. You they expect people to cheer them on, give them a round of applause for shit that has been done before, but was never used as as a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. Because people are like, oh, how are they marketing it? Like, it's subtle. People, like, it's like you got to, like, tell people in detail Everything. every single look at, thing. Look it's at like they, there's no nuance to anything for these people. Yeah, they don't, they, they, people don't read between the lines. Yeah, you know? they don't. Like, if you look at Kevin, right? Like, and I'm going to get a little, a little, a little uh, show, show, give me an example. Kevin is the most masculine looking character of the group. He's the only one with any visible muscle mass. He's the only one that looks formidable. But what, what role has he been uh, placed in? He's the caretaker. He's the mom of the group. He's uh, the sensitive guy of the group. He's the uh, chef. chef of the group. He's like he's like a caretaker. He, he's become like a, a caretaker role. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, if you look at Mighty Thor, right? The, the movie that came out. You look at Natalie, oh yeah, mighty the mighty Thor. And you know the the worst part. I know this is it seems kind of left field, but they they correlate. Mighty Thor. Now when you search up the mighty Thor, Natalie Portman comes up mm. as Thor. You know, so the mighty Thor traditionally was you know obviously the male hero, blonde hair, as guardian, yep. whatever. But because of the movie, now the the term the mighty Thor is associated with female Thor, and that was intentional. Yep. Because people know. That if you're not even like a hardcore MCU fan, if you're a comic book fan, you search it, that you know that that's his title. It's like Iron Man, the Invincible Iron Man, the yeah. Amazing Spider-Man. Now the word the Mighty Thor is infinitely tied to female Thor. That's why that movie was titled that way. That was on purpose. That's an example of nuance. Yep. And then within that movie, um, you know Thor gets demasculated, obviously. Yeah. Like that movie's of course. that movie's terrible. I'm sorry. I like <laughs> I, it's 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 just it, it's really um egregious because Chris Hemsworth is a great Thor, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's just a shame. But that's kind of what they do in other media. They'll have little things. It's like the joke I mentioned about um Chris and and Claire. Yeah. yeah. William Burke is screaming out, uh, "How could your sister be so smart and you're so dumb?" That's intentional. It's intentional. Yeah. It's intentional. It's not on purpose. You, you people. It is on purpose. No, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's on purpose. It's, it's on not, purpose. Yeah, people people think that... uh, They like to use words like, oh, you're reaching, you're stretching, or whatever. The reason why they get away with it is because people will purchase something no matter what. They have decided that I need to consume said product. So because of that, I don't want to hear anything bad about it. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll do mental gymnastics. So to like, uh, brand loyalty. Brand loyalty, stuff like that. Like... Here's the thing. Every, everyone does it to some degree, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. We all do it to some, all, some extent. To some extent. But understand that it's on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's on purpose. They want you to think like they think. They want you to know. And if they, if you don't think like they, they think, they want to taint something that you already liked. Such as the Saints Row series. Yep. Such as um the Assassin's Creed series. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, especially, um, what was it, Odyssey? Yeah, I won't go... That? 
that one, that was the one with Leila Hassan. They both have Leila Hassan, right? Yeah, Origins and Odyssey. But Odyssey it, was the one where, like, I think they revealed that she was like the chosen. Yeah, one. the chosen one. That's on purpose. It's to erase Desmond. You know, I'm not gonna go into too many details on those games. And like I said, um, you mentioned before about Kevin and like Kevin, well. and yeah, and, and, and like I just want to state that people will go out, like people watching this video now that don't necessarily agree if they lasted this long, they're gonna be like, well. Uh, you're reaching, you're stretching, uh, you're thinking too much about it, you're you're thinking too hard on it, but the, the reality is, it's on purpose. They're doing it on purpose. They admit that they're doing it on purpose. They say it in interviews. They don't, they don't want you, they don't want people to, they want the media people consumed to be growing up, mm -hmm. to be like, oh, um, your gender doesn't matter, your roles don't matter, everything is the same, no matter, like they're trying to, um, what's the word? Uh, I say they as in like the, you know, the media and, and other groups. They masculate. They're trying to demasculate, but they're they're trying to um, erase identity because it's easier to control people when you have like gener general um, weakness, right? Mm -hmm. Like men men have traditionally um, been the uh, like the like the um, protectors of the family, like the leaders of the family, right? And like if the guys are like now have this like this. Uh, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with femininity or masculinity or whatever. It's just, it has its context. And when you erase that, it kind of removes like a shield that people have from like control, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so like I said, I went on a bit of a rant, but Kevin represents that. That's that's exactly what he is. You make the most masculine character in the group, the most <laughs> maternal, maternal, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you could say maternal. He becomes a maternal role. Then you have the female character. Like it's like another thing too is like who can, who believes the boss is like tough man come on come on doesn't even matter uh, how you change her uh, his or her voice like the voice well yeah I mean you can you can make you can make a male you can make a male yeah, I, I'm yeah. saying like the default boss yeah the one they wanted you to play as because trust me if they can get away with like you not having character it would be that character they would yeah that's what they would have done yeah like and you look at that and like I care that character is not threatening. It's not. Nope, not Ellie. Them. Ellie. Ellie from The Last of Us, for example, beating up and brutally killing two hundred pound men mm -hmm. with brute force. You know, this is the kind of thing they want to sell you. They want people to believe that kind of. They they want to change people's beliefs because to he, fit their narrative. To fit their narrative, hubris. You know, yep. like, and it's just not true. You know, and it, it shows. You know, it, it's. It's crazy. It's crazy, and I feel like uh, that's one of the worst things about Saints Row is that so many people they're so used to seeing things like that now because of uh, every because all forms of media have basically been like hijacked. Hijacked. So the idea is that whether it fails or or succeeds, as long as you can, as long as it exists and you're and people are consuming the products, it becomes normalized to them. You know. So I'll leave it at that. Went on a bit of a rant. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with, obviously, there's nothing wrong with being a woman, man. People should do whatever they want. I'm just saying that as a person who consumes media, just make sure that you pay attention because they are trying to, like, reprogram you to think a certain way. And to deny that is not going to change the fact that it's happening. You can say people are reaching all they want, but if you really look at it, that's what's happening, you know, objectively. Yep. So... Any predictions on what's going to happen with the series or Volition? Because they still got DLC to put out. Apparently they got a, um, a DLC where they extend the map. And I don't know how that's going to work. So... I, I'm shocked that game has DLC. Even. I mean, they, you know, plan DLC Obviously. in, in advance. I know, so, but you, you know. would think that, like... They co it costs money to put that on a server and, like, put in... Well, good thing they got that Epic Games check. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, here's the thing. The game had, because it's a reboot and because the series initially didn't do well, like, it, it hasn't been doing as well since Saints Row, what, 3, maybe? Yeah, Saints Row 4 didn't do as well Saints as 3. Saints Row 4, and like, the, and, like, it's been so long. It's a reboot. It's drastically different. I'm sure that company had very little, their parent company had very little faith in that game. You can see that. Um... Their budget was probably a shoestring budget, right? And uh, I mean, apparently the Epic Games provides them with. I I heard that um, 
that when you get the epic games deal when you get the exclusive uh deal on, on pc with them they cover most of the budget or something oh, like wow, that so a a allegedly i don't know how true that is it's the first time i heard that uh well, from, from uh someone in the video where they had mentioned it so or well, maybe they helped uh with some of the costs for it i would mm -hmm. assume but usually when it goes to epic games exclusive for however how long it is it kind of gives you an idea like they don't have a lot of faith i mean Look at Shinmu 3, for example. Yeah. Has anyone talked about Shinmu 3 in a oh. while? Do we even know there's going to be another one? I don't want to talk, I don't wanna talk about Shenmue 3. <laughs> when was the last time we heard about anything Shenmu other than the anime? Shenmu is a disgrace. They disgraced that series. I have no respect for the creator. And, uh, you know, not on a human level, but as a creator, I don't respect them. I'm looking for some sailors. Because, <laughs> think about it. This guy... He gets this insane budget of a crowdfund. And after crowdfunding this game and having this money, he decides that he's either going to pocket the money and just make... It's like you get all this money, but then you make the game on a serious budget. And then the game is released and he pockets all that money to say, well, if it doesn't do well, then I'm going to make, I have enough money to make a sequel. I don't need to crowdfund again. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's like also you're hindering the game's uh, reputation. Like, rep reputation, but yeah, reputation, but also like the quality. Yeah. Because now you're making a game at a lesser cost mm -hmm. and to save money to make more games, but then the game is not good because it has, it was made on a smaller budget. Because of, you know, I, I don't want to say it's greed, but it seems like he just wanted to either pocket the money for himself, the rest of it, the leftovers, mm -hmm. or he was planning ahead with like the sequels, right? Giving him the benefit of the doubt on the latter. Yeah. So who knows if that's going to be the same thing with Saints Row. Maybe they'll have enough money to make a second game, but the game released but, in horrible condition. But, the Metacritic mm -hmm. is terrible. The response yeah. from the media and also regular everyday people that bought the game with their own money are saying that it's for the most part it's bad Look, the only real positive that i've heard for the most part that's been somewhat consistent is that the gameplay is fun and the customization is good other than that the game is buggy the story is ass the characters fucking suck and are cringy and, and it's then, terrible even then the fun factor like how like fun is subjective also yeah, how fun is because it? like it could be fun but then like some people find assassin's creed odyssey fun for example i don't so that's also subjective and also um if you look at the older saints rows compared to the newer ones um there are some cool things like the executions in in the newer reboot mm -hmm. which they some of them look kind of cool so i mean i like some of the animations but realistically that's if they're not glitching that's if they're not glitching yeah but realistically the gameplay looks really generic and also it's a 2022 game with no bullet damage on enemies not even just that it's just a 22 2022 game that is missing missing features from even saints row 2 there's comparison videos to that game people make comparisons to uh the gta games not even just five or even four people even, like they can't even do things that san andreas did or three or vice city it's like it's lazy and you can say oh well gta is a uh, they had a crazy budget all the time and so on and so forth all right that's fair what about saints row why is saints row three and two or even one doing things that this game can't even do yeah Never mind the attention detail, yeah, but the fact that those games came out functioning better than than the reboot. You gonna tell me this reboot didn't have a higher budget than any of those games at all? This and, game was delayed six months. And no Saints excuse. Row 2 wasn't a real glitch fest either. It was like pretty no. pretty solid, pretty Unless polished. It's on PC, on PC, yeah. Maybe I, I didn't know about Saints yeah, Row 2 on PC, but yeah. I know as far as I'm going by playing it on on console. And um, as far as the console versions go, they ran pretty smoothly, actually. Some frame rate issues. But, know, but generally, but generally, like, honestly, the main frame rate problem I noticed was specifically when you're escaping the prison mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yes. Yeah, but but after that, I don't really like see like yeah, a, that's probably like the worst. The worst of it. Of it yeah. Like it's pretty polished considering that that game was like not really with didn't have the highest budget per no, se yeah. or whatever. And the fun thing about that game is there's so many enterable areas. Mm -hmm that you can go into and they're pretty fleshed out inside even like the reboot doesn't yeah like the restaurants um you go into like they'll have like chairs set up and it's not like some you know how some modern games they'll like have enterable areas but they seem really cheap and like yeah, like you can't like like metal gear 5 like yeah. metal gear 5 had environments like that mm -hmm. and um or even like well the witcher is pretty detailed with the internal environments but anyway like saints row 2 when you go into certain areas 
they're like pretty polished you can't even interact with the objects like pick up chairs pick up um things on the ground and throw them and yeah i just don't i mean saints Row reboot like what else can what else can you really say about it honestly like it's, it's just like not something that i could, would consider good yeah. from a technical standpoint and from a story standpoint the game could maybe, maybe the gameplay could be fun i don't know because i'm not playing that game i'm just going by what i've seen in videos of like people playing it to when i look at people play the game it seems very mid it's um, like no matter how, what video you're watching it like it doesn't look good it looks, it looks mid like yeah it really the gameplay does. gameplay, gameplay l- looks mid then it, it, a lot almost every saints row um video that i've seen had bugs in it yeah. all of them all of them had bugs in it there's a lack of polish a lack of fidelity mm-hmm. there's, there's a lack of fidelity yeah. like I just don't I don't think uh, you didn't make another one I think Saints Row is dead I think unless mm-hmm. um, unless the studio wants to invest in a, in a like basically uh, take a risk on another Saints Row game I would say it's safe, it's safe to say Saints Row is, is dead but who knows Yeah, who knows? You never know. Um, I think it's dead, too. I think Volition probably will uh, close their doors once they're done with that. Uh, hum- I don't know how many DLC that game's going to have. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if they did something similar to, say, WWE 2K20, where the game was a mess, and they had to put out DLC for it. And after the first one, which came out, I believe, in October, where they gave you The Fiend for free with the DLC. And they had, uh, it was like a Halloween-themed one. And it wasn't anything great or anything like that. But when, if you compare it to the DLC packs that came out after, uh, the first one that came out, the Halloween one, actually has more, uh, it seems like it had a higher budget. Like, a lot more care was put into it. And it seems like... They probably like pulled funds back or resources back for the DLC, focused more on uh, patching the game and moving on to the next WWE game, right. which is possible with the with this uh, reboot where they probably, if it did well, then yeah, it would have they would have been able to put out some uh, maybe quality DLC, and where now it's possible that they just get out the just rush everything out to just get it out the way and just patch the game up as much as they can to fulfill their commitments. yeah basically just simply just to fulfill commitments and then after that who knows i doubt at some point they're going to just probably just stop putting out patches similar to uh Arkham origins which you mentioned before they just, they just like stop putting it yeah they put it out like they just stop updating the game this will be the last patch and you gotta, gotta move on same thing with uh, we they put out a final patch after you, the DLC and that was you, it. And I'm sorry to interrupt you because it's just awesome. a, I have to get that thought out. It's like <laughs> when you sell a broken game, it's so it's such a, a messed up thing to do because you're literally stealing from people. Yep. People are expecting your product to work. It's like like you would no one would accept this in any other like any other form of entertainment or pro, or product yeah, consumer product. Imagine, if you go you buy a shirt if your shirt if you buy a shirt and it has a stain on it, you're not gonna try to get your money back. You're not going to expect your shirt to not have a stain on it, you know, when you buy it, when it's, when it's new, you know, or you go into a restaurant and the food is not cooked. You're going to expect, the, you know, obviously you're going to want your food cooked properly. Um, yeah. You know, I don't understand why people think it's OK because there's day one patches because there's no guarantee that that day one patch will 100 percent fix the game. And it becomes a crutch for developers because they can say, oh, well, we'll fix it with the confidence to think that they can fix a problem. But the problem might be more complicated than they thought. And you see, mm-hmm. you see that all, all, the t- the time. all the time. Oh, we try to fix one thing and something else broke, you know? That's like notorious with Bethesda. Yeah, so, so it's kind of a thing where, where as, like, as gamers, we have to just say, no, I'm not going to buy it right away. Companies should not expect you to buy the game day one. They should expect you. I know that sounds kind of weird, right? Because it's like, oh, they have to make money. But the company should expect that you're going to see the game, make sure it works, and then buy it. That should be the norm. It should be the norm that your game has to work on release. And if there's any bugs, then they, then they can fix them. But they're releasing it with the assurance that it's in peak quality. Yep. Because the, the uh, producers of the game... Or the parent companies or whatever you know whichever whoever is like calling certain shots they're gonna they're gonna say things like well we need the game out by october but why does the game need to come out in october you don't want to pay these guys 
because you don't you want to cut costs you want to pay them for x period that's their contract game comes out you make your profit but if the game isn't working properly and you release a bad game you're going to lose money inevitably so rushing already tired and and um, worn down probably underpaid i don't know i would assume so underpaid and programmers and developers to make these games and you're rushing them and then if the game's not fully polished you're expecting them to force the game out and then you blame the you blame the studio yeah. granted obviously the you know everyone needs to be a professional everyone needs to do their job to a t within to some because i do independent and so one thing i do is independent animation and sometimes like you have a deadline you have to f um, fill that deadline but if it doesn't look to quality you're better off saying hey this is not quality as the quality needs to be and be honest more time yeah and that's where it comes into into not being lazy yep. a developer should do everything in their power to make sure the game works within the time limit but obviously we see that that doesn't happen even with these deadlines it just doesn't happen when they delay it too. even when they delay it so you might as well make sure the game works it's good and then release it and one thing you know nintendo is notorious for a lot of things but one thing is their quality assurance with their first party games is good because they need they know that their IPs are so important, they have to protect them. When was the last time you played a super buggy, broken Metroid game or Mario game? Because they know that, hey, once you make a buggy Mario game, there's no going back. Yep. I'm sure that, I mean, there are Mario games and, and old Nintendo games have bugs for sure. Like, look at the speed runs where they yeah, break yeah. the game. But generally, like, it's not on the level of what you see. Yeah. Most Honestly, of most of them are exploits that you would only know about those bugs if you know about them. Yeah. So, for example, like, oh, if you roll into this building 50 times, you'll go through the wall and then it'll help you beat the game in 20 seconds or whatever. Yeah. But, like, most people aren't going to do that if they play the game as intended. Or Pokemon. Like, Pokemon Red and Blue, if you play the game as intended, they're, they work perfectly fine. But when you start doing weird stuff and you start trying to break the game, then you see how broken the game is. But most people are just going to, like, not even notice the bugs. So, I'm, I'm going back to Pokemon Red and Blue because that's a great example of a game that's held together by strings. But unless you know where to cut those strings, it works fine. Yeah, so... Probably might be the last time we talk about Saints Row uh, reboot. Unless something happens. Unless there's worthwhile news. But, you know, I kind of, you know, went on about that game for a while so and yeah and, and just to end it here i know I, i've been i've been going on a bit of rants i just want to say that back to what i was saying before where it's very important that people really understand what nuance is when it comes to when it comes to uh like how they try to interject certain things into games and it might not be so in your face but you know if you you know you should turn your brain on a little bit because you know obviously think about like companies where they're trying to get people to smoke while watching tv and stuff you yep. know like and it's not that different now there's a lot of subliminal like advertising yep you know think about it this way every time you see a superhero that's male and a superhero that's female and the male's a dumbass what are you gonna subconsciously start to to absorb you're gonna start absorbing that hey you see this guy he's gonna be a, a blumbering idiot yep you know that's that's on and purpose. It has that trickling down effect too. Yeah, and then the, and then kids grow up, and you have this weird thing yeah. where like you have like for example, young girls who, you know, or you know, young guys who don't know how to be you know men. They don't know what you know. I'm not gonna go more into it. I just want to to state that before we get off off, off the subject because I feel I feel like it's important. And if somebody can take something from that and like actually, you know, turn their brain on and keep their eyes open, and you know, it's worth mentioning. All right, so on to the final topic of this uh, podcast, whatever you want to call it. And before I do, apologize for any background noise you may hear. You know, we're in the, was it the loft? We're in one of those things, uh, one of the cribs from Saints Row. Anyway, last topic. No, the it, can't, it can't be. There's no strippers running in and out and people walking in and out for no reason. Oh, yeah. We haven't got there yet. But, uh... So let's get the strippers, though. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. The strippers. Yeah. Should. Definitely. Maybe two. Maybe two. Maybe two. All right, anyway. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on to the final topic. Uh, that is The Last of Us 1 remake or The Last of Us Part 1, whatever you want to call it. The game that allegedly was built from the ground up. Uh, the game that was not a cash grab. The game that everyone involved in the project worked so hard on. 
and put their blood, sweat, and tears in. Uh, so, uh, and the game that was charged for seventy dollars plus a collector's edition that they charged uh, around a hundred, over a hundred, and that people got were sent for whatever reason, uh, fucked up steel cases that they couldn't get refunds for. Anyway. That being said, respect to the uh, artist, because, you know, the artist didn't actually have to work hard. I mean, True. Like, you know, they dared not, like, designing the game from the ground up and making changes. Like, that's the lazy part. Like, the writing aspect, um, the story aspect. I'm sure the programming wasn't as hard because they had, like, a strong reference point already. But the artist should um, deserve a little bit of credit, I feel, because, you know, they had to they had to redo the models. Yeah, I'm sure. Which I'm sure is not, like, easy, you know? Yeah, I'm sure it's not easy to have to redo all that. Even though, yeah, they have reference and whatnot, but they got to make sure it's done right. Even though, for whatever reason, which I'm sure they were told to, a lot of people look kind of uh, a little older, yeah. a little uglier. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying that the models being new, they probably had to, like, really work hard to make sure the models looked um good from an artistic standpoint yeah. doesn't mean, like, you know by artistic standpoint doesn't mean that they look pretty mm -hmm. it just means that like you know they're not beautiful people they they don't look more attractive but the um models themselves are obviously much closer like to real life so i'm sure that's like challenging you know yeah yeah. just yeah. to respect them because i know like you know they did like you know digital art is pretty pretty tedious so yeah my, my my gripe with it is more so the people who are calling the shots that know i was gonna say Directing, bioware writing, yeah writing. yeah the people you know like yeah. uh how we're we gonna market this game because you had um neil Druckmann, uh, uh what's his face um i don't know the name. guy who sounds like he plays himself all the time joe uh <laughs> i would say joe uh, <sighs> fake joker uh yeah troy, troy, troy baker there you go baker. troy baker yeah troy baker you had troy baker there i think you had laura bailey is was she in that no who's the girl who played ellie what's her name i don't remember anyway you had uh i'm pretty sure they had yeah the girl who played ellie they had them on stage at one of these shows last year or was it this year i don't remember yeah it might have been this year actually but they're going on to how uh, important project you know really hyping it up like it's a big deal and people thought originally that the game would play and feel a lot like um the last of us 2 but it turns out that no it's nearly identical to the first one uh, a few tweaks everybody. here and there as far as i know but for the most part it's pretty much the same game that you played from the beginning on ps3 the remaster on ps4 it's pretty much the same thing it just it holds up it looks, well too no yeah it does version looks okay i mean obviously it looks dated but it looks okay yeah it, it, looks it still looks good and honestly yeah. just, it was no reason for this remake i would even call it much of a remake it's too soon it's too soon well i have and we we, we know why they did it because the hbo show that's probably and gonna be a face because remember after the last of us 2 a lot of the fans um that didn't like what they were doing were pretty you know annoyed with them so they lost i'm sure they've lost a lot of a lot of um followers game like you know uh fans yeah. i guess fans is like the easier yeah, way to say yeah. um they lost a lot of fans I'm, i don't know how many but i'm sure last of us one remake being a beat for beat remake is trying to say hey look we respect what we did before too mm -hmm. and uh, we're not going to change it for the sake of like what we're thinking how we think now mm -hmm. so when the last of us 3 comes out you should give us the benefit of the doubt hey guys remember the last of us game you actually did like yeah, and I mean, it stays in their mind when the last was three. It's like, oh, I remember the last the last was game I played was the remake, and that was really good. And they respected the original remake. Yep. And like, look, honestly, like I could be projecting a little bit. So when I say what I just said about the um, about how like, hey, they're like trying to restore good faith and stuff. Like, I don't actually know. Obviously, I'm just projecting a bit of like what I think they're they're doing. But in my opinion, that's what they're doing. That's what I think they're doing. Yeah, because that uh, second game, they got a lot of bad press for that. Yeah. Uh, the, it's similar to Volition, where they just couldn't handle anyone who were in any way against them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you had the leaks, you also had the trailers. People were seeing that there was some kind of agenda going on, kind of how we were going on about uh, the Saints Row world, but they were injecting into the game and the marketing. Mm -hmm. And, and that game's story is all over. Like, even, even like, without, it's again, it's like the same thing with um, Saints Row. Like, even if you take away the, the woke stuff or whatever you want to call it, there's still a mess of a story. 
mm-hmm. right? Like, I don't, you know, spoiler warning, spoilers, if you don't know. Again, spoilers. Let's count, count it to one, two, three, spoilers. All right, anyway. Uh, Ellie killing all of, what's her name again? Abby's friends. Yeah, her faction. Or her faction. Name confronting her and then at the last second deciding it's not worth it when you end the lives of several people up until that point is a totally like dumbass like way to write a story it doesn't make any sense you had conviction all the way up to the last second this person killed somebody that you held dear like a father figure you killed all her friends she killed several of your friends and you just say, hey, uh, killing for revenge is wrong now. I'm going to go home missing fingers and not be able to play guitar anymore. Like, you know, obviously not to, like, take away, like, little nuances in the story. But it kind of doesn't matter because when you look at it from that scope, it's like, it just doesn't make, doesn't make sense. Joel acting like an idiot. Joel acting uncharacteristic mm-hmm. to himself. His brother acting uncharacteristic. You know another, what? another dumb male character. And you know what that reminds me of? You remember when, I remember one time me and Revan had a conversation where you watch a movie and like the person's on the phone is like, oh, well, you know, you're my brother after all. So, <laughs> you know, and they let you, they're telling the audience that, oh, they're brother and sister or whatever. It kind of felt like that with that even where she's like, uh, she's like, oh, you're not, did um, Joel, uh, What's his last name again? A Joel. Uh, I was gonna say Old Steve. <laughs> I don't remember. I, it's been a while. I don't remember. But the point is, um, it's like kind of like a contrived point that he just so happens to save these people that he killed the the parents of. This girl that he killed the parents of then also reveals within the same breath that he's his name. So not only did he run into them by chance, but he also revealed his name to this person. Lets his guard down and gets killed. Like obviously, this has been um broken down to death by several channels i yeah, think if you yeah. know about this subject i don't have to go on yeah. about how stupid this is but but um just the writing itself is terrible even without the, the woke crap in it mm-hmm. but like again it's like naughty dog saying hey we want to have good faith look at us we're respecting you all think we're gonna interject our politics and remake this story to fit our current politics but no we just remade it beat for beat that means you could trust us again i that's like i said it's a projection i admit it i don't know if that's what they were thinking or planning but i would say it's likely to try to bring those people back because think about think about how many people that liked the first game that didn't like the second game are not gonna watch the hbo show because they don't like what they did to joel Mm -hmm. and now they they the remake is the last thing they did so it's fresh in people's mind they were quote unquote respected the original Mm -hmm. and now people that lost some faith in them that you know couldn't control themselves and supported naughty dog by buying Mm -hmm. last of us remake yep they're now going to be like oh well i'll watch the show they respected the game and then when you watch that show get ready for subversion get ready for things that you didn't think were going to be there Mm -hmm. and you know subversion can be good the last 10 years subversion has been pretty bad i think the writer for the show he said he never even played a game or doesn't even plan on doing so you're gonna have like another halo situation oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but furthermore i want to say that uh in, a, in like looking at it like in another perspective so the term remake and remaster you know yes the last of us is a remake it's a remake of the first game. They remade it. They redid the models. They remade it. But the remake of The Last of Us 1 should be the standard for a remaster. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be that a remaster is a slightly polished version of the older game. If they remaster, for example, uh, what do you mean an old game? Uh, uh, drawing a blank. Uh, whatever game. Uh, too old i'm gonna say siphon filter no no that's that's fine if if they're gonna remaster it so if you take a game like i mean that's pretty old (laughs) but how about uh, saints road 2 all right saints road 2 not that old if you take saints road 2 and you remaster it the remaster should have new models new new um lighting new lighting new world textures it should it should be beat for beat because it's a remaster but it should have all the benefits of being uh of what the last of us remake is right 
Yep. So Siphon, look, I'm gonna just use Siphon Filter. If they even quote unquote remaster Siphon Filter, they can keep the gameplay exactly the same, but make it look way better now. And if they, and then what was considered a remaster before should be considered a re-release. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Prototype and Prototype Two, yeah. they fixed the frame rate. They made the frame rate run better. The game runs pretty smooth, and the the quality of the textures are, are up. And I mean, not quality of the textures; they're clearer. You know, it's, it's sharper. It's like clearer. It's not as muddy. It's not as much like it, it's not even it's not as muddy it's just the resolution of the game in itself is like higher yeah so the textures are still muddy but they're you can clearly see how muddy they are now yeah <laughs> that makes sense so that should be considered a re-release not a remaster it's not a remaster they did not remaster the game they just sharpened it that's yeah. a re they just a, it's a to me that's a re-release a remaster is literally you're going back and you're you're taking something and and you're taking something that exists and bringing it to like a, a current stage yeah you know it's like if you re when um they remaster old movies and they make the cgi look better to be like current day cgi mm -hmm. they didn't just polish up the old cgi they yeah. made new cgi mm -hmm. so like star wars I, like star wars yeah. even though it's, even though it's bad i'll admit with star wars it's bad yeah, but, but um the but they did it though that they that that's a, a remaster um when it comes to when it comes to like games like the last of us one remake that should be the standard for remasters especially modern ones it should be the standard if they remake um we talked about this earlier if they, um off off um camera <laughs> off camera yeah if they rem if they remaster arkham origins they should literally just like redo the game keep the game the same arkham knight? yeah it should like be like look like arkham knight but play it and have the story of origins without the bugs yeah, yeah right because a remake i don't think anybody realistically wants a beat for beat remake mm -hmm. unless it's like a specific kind of thing and even then what they really want is not a remake they want a remaster the people that yeah. want a beat for beat remake want a remaster mm -hmm. but a real remaster like a, a truly a, the true definition of remastering it and then the people that want remakes want it to be like modernized and changed to to fit the, the time yeah like resident evil yeah, like, like how, how they did with the remake of one, two, and even three. Yeah, because I, I love Resident Evil One. Like I I am a big fan of that game. But if you look at the way the characters are dressed, the way they look, it's very nineties. It looks like a it looks like the nineties, mm -hmm. right? And um, you know the, the the way that they're dressed as like SWAT members is not like it's definitely a design from Japan from the nineties. It has that strong like aesthetic. So obviously, if they remade it, they would change the costumes a little bit to fit um current um, i mean they still make it look like it's part of that time period like that, that time period that but time they'll, period, they'll make it look like more contemporary but yeah, it depends but like that's not so like over the top or and it just try to like tone it down a bit so mm -hmm. it look, doesn't look it doesn't look so out of place with how realistic everything is kind of like what they did with two the remake of two yeah yeah but remake of two modernized like he hasn't got these like like big ass like shoulder, shoulder pad. pads or poppy uh -huh. like but that's what there's I'm saying. Adjustments to it. That's the exact. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's like they'll, like, Resident Evil 2 remake takes place in the 90s, and it looks like the 90s, but the designs don't look like designs from the 90s. They look yeah. like, that's kind of weird, right? But you know what I mean. It's like the 80s, right? Like if you make a game and it takes place in the 80s, if the game was designed in the 80s, it would have a different aesthetic yeah. than than uh, being a game that takes place in the 80s, but looks made today. Made today, it would have like a different look. It's yeah. like. You know, like, for, like you look at 1930s, 1940s, everything's black and white. Obviously, yeah. everything wasn't black and white yeah. back then. So if they made a 30s or 40s film now, it'll have modern cameras. Um, it high... Yeah, it wouldn't look like, um, God, what's that movie? Uh, God, something, uh, what was it, 19, uh, something Angry Men. It's when mm. they're like all in the courtroom. They got to find out who's guilty. Yeah. It's a black and white movie, but it's old as hell. Like, yeah, because the cameras it, had to be black yeah, and white. So if they remake it. Or someone does something similar to that, then um, it's gonna look different. Like uh, what was it? The man who knows too much, some shit like that. Mm -hmm. was some type of he was a barber and. Uh, or even it's like some like that. those really old movies. It's like, even if you put a black and white filter over it, the mm -hmm. camera quality will be higher. The cinematic yeah. techniques will be it just better. It wouldn't be the same. It just it's not gonna be a '30s they movie. They can try, kind of like um, Halloween Kills when they try to recreate the old scenes. They did a good job. Too. They actually did. They did a good job. You can tell like. It's still modern cameras. Yeah, some modern cameras. It's a little looks a little different, somewhat. Mm -hmm. Especially if you know, like you know, like there ain't no way to doing all this other extra mm -hmm. shit, extra shit that somehow now is being like put into the move into this movie. 
So you can tell like when they're like, when it's modern, when it's like they got the new cameras and everything, they're putting a, a, a filter over it because they're doing all these little tricks to make it look old, but you can tell it's not really old. Yeah, and you see that with like digital animation where like, I mean like not just digital animation, I mean animation in general. Like when you watch like a really old anime and everything was hand colored because yeah. it had no choice versus now, they might try to give it that look like a 90s anime, but if it's digitally colored, it'll still have like the stank of digital color. Yeah. I don't mean stank in a bad way. I'm just I'm just saying like that taste of like digital color where it's uncanny. Yeah. You know, so or even flash animation. No matter how good you are with flash animation, it will be it would look like flash animation. Yeah. Um but yeah, like I I think like more of the stories, I think as like the the gaming community or i don't want to want to say the game community it sounds freaking weird but i don't like that term <laughs> whatever like as gamers as as people people within the industry itself should redefine what a remaster and a remake is because the last of us one remake is a it, to me that should be the standard of a remaster yeah and a remake should be like resident evil 2 where it's an actual changed story and look yeah and i think that um a lot of people so I think if you want a remake of something, you want like a sort of like a reboot of it, almost like a re, uh, a different take on like an old on an old thing, mm -hmm. right? Like Resident Evil Two. Yeah, yeah. And then with like uh, with a re, I think a lot of people that say no, I want it to be exactly like the old thing, but with better graphics. I think what you're saying is you want the thing to be remastered to be with to look current. Yeah. But you want that old thing, so I think that should be considered remastered. Yeah. So yeah. I think if anything, it's more. It has a lot to do with like what we're used to seeing as a remake to what we're used to seeing as a remaster. So when a lot of people say like, "Oh, I want a remake," you know, they're thinking of like everyone usually thinks something like a Resident Evil Two or Resident Evil One, whichever. And when you think of a remaster, a lot of people are thinking like, like you said, prototype or um, God, what's another one? The uh, Red Faction, gonna, whatever. Last of Us 1 yeah, the last one, uh, one remaster that was on PS4. So, but I, 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 I agree. I think they have to really uh, do a better job of when it comes down to a remaster and a remake. I think a remake has to really uh, do more than just make it look better. Mm -hmm. And with a remastered, they have to do more from than just say, "All right, well, sharpen we're gonna it. sharpen it up. We're gonna." keep the frame rate steady because sometimes these remasters don't even go to 60 frames they just so stay they just arkham asylum yeah the arkham uh collection terrible awful it's like you know it's like arkham city runs just as bad as it did in my 360 in 2011. that's how bad like the remaster of that game when you're in the open world it literally runs as bad as my damaged 360 ran the game in 2011 with a crack in the disc it's the same low quality low ass frame rate yep so you know they just gotta do a better job i just i think the the remake should first of all should not be 70 dollars they shouldn't even bother with a collector's edition for this old ass game they shouldn't be saying that oh uh, from the ground up because they're talking about everything was new going about it like that and then like they make little little changes to the actual gameplay itself they should they should also um i think like also we should re really be calling games like the last of us one ps4 um the the prototype remaster we should really be calling those re-releases because i really feel like they're like they're just re-releases and obviously a game shouldn't be having ps2 re if it's a ps2 re-release it shouldn't have the resolution of a ps2 game it should look clearer like to me that's not that impressive and honestly like if it was released below a, if it was just re-released without the changes that a remaster would have then it would just be a shitty re-release i don't think i don't think it would be like even considered like a remaster yeah so just call yeah. it a re-release yeah what just it is. It's yeah re-releasing the game and you're just making it you're taking advantage of current hardware that's mm -hmm. not a remaster yeah so i just think that um i think we can agree it was a cash grab right yes. cash grab a way to build faith back with fans to help promote the upcoming hbo show and really just get something out there because i mean 
who knows how who, long last of will take if they are making it. Or whatever the next game is going to be. So who knows? Apparently Neil Druckmann is working with on the show as well in some capacity. So I don't know. Maybe he's going <laughs> to... I don't know. It's like normally having a creator on there is a good sign, but in this case, it's actually pretty bad still. Yeah, look, look how he uh, made Last of Us Two. He ruined his own series. He ruined it. Yeah, he did. Maybe he's gonna have Anita Sarkeesian on board with the with the uh, show as well. And hell, Joel didn't even have Joel dying wasn't the problem. He could have died, but to die like that in that way with that writing, in that scene. And also, because I see people say, "Oh, uh, people's father figure Joel died." And first of all, I don't care about this series. I have no attachment to this series whatsoever. If that shit died, it would never make it again. I wouldn't care. I don't. Kinda, I, I like the first game, and I don't care. I uh, yeah. I mean, I get it. People like it. I have no problem with people liking it. You know, teach even their own. The, even when the second game was bad, I wasn't like one of those people where it was like the end of the world or anything. I just was like, oh damn, that sucks. It's ass. I guess The Last of Us is dead to me. It's yeah. woke. I basically came to the conclusion, oh damn, it's woke and it's bad. <laughs> uh. Last of Us Two is is done for me, mm -hmm. and, I, and I really like the first game a lot. Like I don't, but I don't. I'm in the same boat. I don't have like an attachment where I'm like, oh well, this is the end of the world. Or, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It's like whatever. Yeah, but you know, some people they'll try to defend the dumbass choices that Naughty Dog made with how Joe uh, was handled in that game, not just with how his character was portrayed, but also with how how he died. And I'm like, oh, uh, your father figure, your fake ass father figure, Joel died. Y'all need a real father in life. And his thing. People are attached to the character because they liked how the character was portrayed and written within the first game. He he was like, a lot of people had this attachment because of it was like a father, it was like a father and daughter relationship, where other people, especially if if their their father's playing the game and they have children, then they can connect with that more. Or even. People who aren't, I mean, you don't have to be a, uh, a father and have a daughter or a son or whoever to have that connection with the character because you understand that because you don't, it's not like you have to be in that person's shoes to understand. It's that you, you get that connection because of how well written it was. So for all the game's faults of the second game, the first game for a lot of people was written well so they had the attachment and that's when you know when you made a really good game and a good character and you and a lot of people have that connection that's why they didn't like how he was handled because you fu clearly purposely and, and, fucked up and the character also, and 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 also to your point it's like if you're in game design and like you said you want your character to be beloved that way how is it a criticism to say oh well people are mad because they looked up to joel and they saw him die like that how is that even a legit criticism People can be inspired by fictional characters. That's the point of fiction. That's why they're, that's why they're trying to use it to, to manipulate people now. And, it all, you know, and like, back to what you were saying before, it's like, yes, you know, if you make this character that's like beloved and he becomes iconic, of course people are going to feel cheated when, when they're given given that kind of death scene you know they're given that kind of portrayal they're given that kind of letdown you know yeah exactly because they feel let let down because the creator basically went out of his way and you know, everyone else involved to ruin an established character that people really enjoyed How all for the sake to prop up a new character that it's hard and mediocre and then you're expecting people to just like want to play as this character for x number of hours and really care about this character when this character beat this beloved character to death for what and people are very just to let her escape and you have an ellie go after her and doing all this extra shit just to not to not, not get even get revenge just to get her fingers bit off and then just for nothing she edgy. loses she loses she lost everything at the end and just to be make an edgy story. For yeah, the sake just of an edgy a, story. yeah, a, a lazy, shitty revenge story that isn't even a revenge story. It's, it's, yeah, it's like some fake deep shit. Was like, oh, we're all evil or whatever the fuck. It's like some dumb deep shit that these creators usually try to do because they can't make good writing. They can't make good stories. If they were gonna go that far, they should have had Abby die. And now you have played with both characters, so Abby died. The character you play as ellie goes or may have you choose you can choose to let them go or you can choose to kill them and then the third game will and then the cannon ending, I don't know. and then ellie goes back to her thing having killed her and got in revenge and says wait i have no fingers i got revenge joel is dead 
all my friends are dead and I just put myself through hell and and uh, psychological trauma and I have nothing to show for it. That to me is, is better. I still think the story needs to be reworked from the ground up, but that would still be better than what we got, you know? Yeah. And people, I was going to say before that people underestimate the power of fiction. Yep. People don't understand how many how many athletes have become athletes because they were inspired by characters like The Flash, mm -hmm. Superman, Batman. Um, how many people became fighters because they like anime mm -hmm. and they wanted to be like Goku or or Baki or something? You know, like people are inspired by fiction. That's why poli po politicians try to hijack media to do propaganda because it's powerful. For, so for someone to say, "Oh well, y'all just mad because y'all father figure died," then. <laughs> Then I'm not saying that I think like that. I, like I said, I don't care. But the point is, I mean, I do. I, I was annoyed by it, but I wasn't like the end. Of, like this is the end of the world. I just thought it was really like shitty. Um, but yeah, it's like there's nothing wrong with people looking up to this fictional character. And if you're playing a game and you don't care about the characters, then why are you even playing it to begin with? Why are you even playing the well a story driven story driven a game. story driven oh, game? Let me be clear, because then there'll be somebody yeah. one of Revenant's haters will be like, well, some games are just for fun, like Crackdown or something. It's like I get that, I get that, but I'm talking about story driven games. And if you're playing a story driven game, if you're playing The Last of Us and you don't care about Joel then why did you even like buy the second game why did you how did you even enjoy the game because the gameplay is is pretty linear mm -hmm. it's divided into sex um, set pieces it's long as hell like that's not one game that's not a game where you say oh i'm just playing this for the gameplay because the gameplay is slow for the most part mm -hmm. and then the combat is not it's like you're fighting every two seconds all right so i guess we talked enough about last of us cash grab remake and since we got through all the topics, we're gonna exit out of this whole thing. So I'll let Jim Pachi uh, give his little outro and whatnot. So there you go. Little outro? You mean great big epic outro? Anyway, uh, see, big and epic. It's loud. Anyway, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You know, I normally don't talk about those subjects, so. You know in my own video so i kind of went on a couple of rants but uh ho hopefully you guys stood through and and you know got a j the gist of what i'm trying to say and you know it was, it was fun it's a fun fun idea i definitely definitely would like to come back and do another one so you know let us know in the comments below give us feedback maybe different topics or if you like this format and you know we'll do it i'm, I'm here for it you know i don't mind doing another one also check out my channel uh Genpachi. i do a lot of like creative stealth gameplay uh, most of it is arkham but i'm i do have like other games on there that i play i like to do like you know cinematic gameplay cinematic takedowns uh stealth i also do animation and a couple other things so just check out the channel and if you like it you know subscribe and you know more more of that to come but yeah on that note thanks for having me and uh all right all right then so you already know where to find me because you're already here so again if you like the format like what we're doing there'll be more of that hopefully but any feedback is welcome and yeah so uh we're out of here thanks for watching and peace